A customer sent in a power supply for a Samsung 75 inch TV and their complaint was that the TV would not power on at all. We had no standby light whatsoever. So let's take a closer look and figure out how to fix that. Now I've set my multimeter to beep mode so when I have a short, I get a beep. And the first thing I wanna do is check my fuse. And I'm not getting a beep, which tells me that this fuse is blown and is open, so that will need to be replaced. But the fuse does not blow for no reason, so most likely there's a short down the line somewhere. Let's check out this fuse as well. That one's good. The next thing I wanna check is usually transistors and diodes. So it's gonna be these two guys over here and the ones underneath this heat sink over here. We're gonna flip the board over for that. And I'm gonna put my negative lead on the center pin and my positive lead on the outer pins. No shorts. And no shorts. And same thing over here, negative pin on the center pin and positive on the outer pins. And we have a short. Lower leg, no short. Okay, so just the upper leg. We have a short, another short, short, and no short. Now out of these three components, the outer two are transistors and the center one is a diode. The diode typically does not short out. It is registering a short because it is in parallel with the two transistors. So the first thing I wanna to do to confirm what components exactly are defective is remove the two transistors and then we're gonna recheck the circuit to see if the shorts are gone. If they are, that'll confirm the diode is in good condition and we'll recheck the transistors out of circuit to confirm they are indeed faulty. So I'm gonna start by adding some solder to all of our joints. And I've realized because the diode is also screwed into the heatsink, I'm actually gonna remove it as well and leave it screwed into the heatsink as I remove all three components at the same time. And then next we're gonna go ahead and add solder to the heatsink itself. And now I'm gonna use my desolder pump to desolder these joints. Now the center leg of the two transistors is giving me a little bit of a hard time to desolder. So I'm gonna add a little bit more solder, get really good flow, and then try again. I don't think I have a clear joint yet, but let me just desolder with the desolder wick. Clean up the rest of the joints, and then we'll take a closer look. So using my tweezers, I can move this pin and that confirms that we have it properly desoldered. This one is not moving, however. Moving, moving. So this one over here, not desoldered. We're gonna have to spend a little more time on it. Okay, and now we have movement, so it's free. And my last two joints are gonna be these large guys over here on the heat sink. Let's see if we can get those. Yes. I'm always a little afraid of these because they're usually on larger pads and they are very difficult to desolder, but this one looks okay. All right, let's flip this over. And I should be able to wiggle this out. Uh, and you know what, there is all this silicone here, so let's remove that first. There we go. And our three components are out. Now back to our beep mode. When we have a short, we have a beep. Let's recheck. Short is gone. No short, no short, no short, no short, no short. Now let's check our components. 
No short. No short. Let's check the diode. Oh, the diode is shorted. Okay. And the transistor over here, also shorted. So to my surprise, this center diode is actually shorted, and so is this transistor over to the right. But to be safe, we're gonna replace all three components. I am no longer in beat mode, I am now in resistance mode. And we're gonna do a comparison. So this is our center diode, and it's showing zero ohms, 0 0.6. And our replacement is showing 0 0.64 mega ohms, which is 641,000 ohms. And then this one over here, zero ohms, obviously that's a problem. And 111 ohms on the other leg. Now on our good replacement, we have 10.8 mega ohms on one leg and the other should be open, and it is. All right, let's go ahead and remove the components off the heatsink. All right, now we need to bend the pins so that they line up with the holes. And now we're gonna lock in the heatsink first. And finally the components. Go ahead and cut off the excess of the leads. All right, and we are back in beep mode. When we have a short, we get a beep. Let's do confirmation. No short, no short. No short, no short. No short, so we got rid of all our shorts. We do still have to replace the fuse, but before we do that, if you have found the video helpful or useful so far, make sure to leave us a like and subscribe for more content. So same as the transistors, we're gonna go ahead and add some solder first. We're gonna get a nice flow. And then we're gonna use our desolder pump to remove all that solder. And it looks like the fuse actually just fell right through. We're gonna go ahead and feed our replacement fuse through. Now that we've completed all of our repairs, it's time to live test. So let's plug it in and everything seems okay. First thing I wanna check is my filter capacitors over here. We should be getting about 390 volts, 391, 390. Okay, that's good news. That means that our repair is holding. Next, I wanna check the output power to our main board over here from this connector. We have pins seven, nine, 11, 13, 15 that are supposed to output 13 volts and we're getting 12.7, which is correct. And then I also wanna make sure that we're getting power to our LEDs over here, and we're getting about 150 volts. So that's good. This does confirm we have another successful repair. If you are interested in sending in your power supply for us to fix, we'll have a link to our flat rate repair services in the video description down below. If you're interested in trying this repair yourself, we'll also have a link to a repair kit that you can purchase and install yourself to try and fix your power supply. Same thing, that will also be in the video description down below. If you found the video helpful or useful, make sure to leave us a like, subscribe for more, and thank you for watching.